the so-called hockey stick graph. I think many of you will be familiar with this. Here's how the hockey stick graph came to public attention. In 1998, an American climate scientist named Michael Mann, along with his co-workers, published a study uh, which attempted to, to estimate temperatures from the year 1000 to the present using 112 proxy studies. These, uh, by proxy studies, I mean tree ring and isotope and ice core studies that are, are intended to provide a indirect measurement of temperature in the time before thermometers existed. Mann's results appeared to show a spike in recent temperatures that was unprecedented in the last 1,000 years. And you see it there on the far right-hand side. As a result, his report achieved immediate and worldwide fame. It also formed the centerpiece of the UN's third assessment report in, 19, in 2001. That's the third assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Mann's assessment of the data was criticized on several fronts. The first was historical fact. His chart didn't appear to show the well-known medieval warm period or the so-called Little Ice Age that occurred in the 1500s. This his advocates explained by saying those were European but not global phenomena. That started a hunt through historical records in China and elsewhere. And now I think many people are inclined to believe that the sharp rise and equally sharp fall in medieval temperatures was indeed a global phenomenon. The next chapter in the story began when two Canadian researchers, McIntyre and McKittrick, obtained man's data and repeated his study. They found what they considered to be numerous grave and astonishing errors in man's work which they detailed in 2003. This is one page of the listings, which I can't read what it says. <laughs> and for example, they, they found the two statistical series in the study shared the same data. The data had apparently been inadvertently copied from one series to another. In addition, 19 other series had had gaps in the data, which Mann's team had filled in a fact that had not been disclosed. In addition, all 28 tree ring studies had calculation errors, and so on and so forth. Such that in the end, the Canadian's corrected graph looked quite different. Man's original graph is the dark line, and the corrected graph is the red line. And as you see, uh, just looking quickly, it suggests that the current temperature rise and the current state of global temperature as, as contemporaneously measured is very far from the warmest it's been uh, in the last thousand years. And indeed, some of you may have noticed that the, that the discussion has shifted from year X is the warmest year in the last thousand years to year X is the warmest year in the instrumental record, which doesn't quite have the same ring. But there were more problems to come. Mann's statistical approach to the data was somewhat unusual and raised questions about the validity of the formula that he used to do his meta-study. When researchers tested Mann's formula, which they did by feeding it a table of trendless numbers, the so-called Monte Carlo procedures that you do with a computer, what they found was that any table of trendless numbers would produce a hockey stick graph. One of these graphs is the man graph. The others are all from trendless numbers. If you can't tell which is which, that's the problem with this study. That's one of the several large problems with this study. Man's work has been attacked by a number of labs around the world. It's been called phony and a shocker and rubbish by climate scientists who believe in global warming and who are concerned that such sloppy work might undermine the legitimacy of the claim that global warming is a dangerous and alarming fact. As indeed it has undermined it, although I would say very little. But to my mind, 
The real point of this story is that the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, accepted Maine's study without question and without independent review. And therein lies the real warning to policymakers, because even the most widely touted and allegedly reputable studies may be significantly less reliable and some substantive than they initially appear. One of the things that's going on here, I think, is that there is a public perception that uh, results in science are independent, independently verified and confirmed. And the reality is that most studies are not. A very, very small number of them are, are verified. So you can't just assume that because it's been published in a journal that it's right. 